Hi everyone, it's Kaylee. Welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new here. Today I have another vlog style video. We're going to be getting into renovation content, also some home and design updates and talking through some of our plans for the house. And right now I'm also really trying to be a healthy girl. I've been getting into new workout routines. I want to talk about some health stuff. I also have some active wear that I want to share with you guys. So we have a bit of everything in this video. I think it's going to be nice and chill calm serene i'm filming most of it in upstate new york so i'm sure you're gonna get some beautiful nature shots from our property as well but i want to start by going through some new activewear pieces with you guys i'm working with holara on this video i'm so happy to be working with them they reached out to me at seriously the perfect time because i've been on the hunt for some tennis clothes because siggy my boyfriend has really been trying to get me to go to tennis courts with him and play around i've never played tennis in my life but you know the style and the clothes can be cute and hilar reached out to ask to sponsor a video of mine and i was so excited to get some of their pieces in i'm gonna do a little try on haul for you guys hilar is a brand that i'd seen on social media before but i never had any of their pieces myself and something that i really love about their brand is they're so size inclusive it's a big thing they wanted me to chat with you guys about they aim to make clothing for every girl regardless of her body type her height her activity levels. They really want women to feel confident and like their clothes are flattering but also comfortable and durable. I have a few of their wannabe dresses to share with you guys which is one of their most popular styles and they have such a wide range of these dresses. They have the wannabe double D to F cup if you have a bigger chest. They also have plus size and longer length and adjustable options. Laszlo just knocked my camera so it might have changed around a bit but speaking of pets they also just released their pat it off style which is pet hair resistant so that's really lovely if you have pets that shed i'm actually wearing one of the skirts right now that's padded off and that's honestly been my biggest gripe with a lot of activewear that i own is that it's just always covered in laszlo hair have a 15% off coupon code that you guys can use site-wide on Halara. I'm gonna have all the info in the description box below and also on the screen here. If you're gonna get one piece, I would say my favorite is my black wannabe easy peasy dress and also this yoga top. I'll have all of the pieces linked below for you guys though and thank you so much to Halara for working with me on this video. So before we get into the renovation stuff, I'll put timestamps so you guys can skip to that if you're interested. I want to talk about some health stuff that I've been dealing with and kind of the direction that I've been trying to go with exercise. So growing up I was a gymnast and then I also did ballet so I was always moving my body but I wasn't particularly sporty like I never really did team sports or basically any sport with a ball. That's not my strong suit. I've always gotten so much joy out of moving my body. As I got older and moved on from gymnastics and dance, I moved more into doing yoga and Pilates and I really loved yoga so much. Then I started to have this little issue in my wrist, which I know some of you guys have dealt with too. If you've been following me for a little while, you know it's been almost two years now. I had to have surgery on my wrist to get a cyst removed from my tendon that was basically making it where I couldn't move my wrist past this point and I also couldn't put any weight on it, which if you do yoga and a lot of exercises, honestly, so many of them are body weight focused and you need to be able to distribute your weight on your wrists. So I definitely grieved that for a while. I got the surgery. I did all the physical therapy. It was honestly so expensive and kind of a traumatizing experience. I opted for a surgery because the doctor told me that that was the least likely way that it would come back. There was also an option just to drain out fluid, but it would probably just fill right back up again. So fast forward to now, 
my little cyst is back. I'm in just as much pain as before. And I don't think I'm gonna go through with that surgery again. I might try to go get it drained, but I've just heard so much about this being a persistent issue. And sometimes they don't hurt people. It kind of depends on their placement. And I'm also so thankful it's not in my ankles because it happens in joints and they don't really know what causes it. It's kind of gross, but it's basically just when there's a fluid leaking from your joint and it's usually from trauma. My doctor thinks it's because I did gymnastics growing up. So I can't really do yoga anymore. I can't do some bits of Pilates either. So I've been trying to learn tennis. That's something I can actually do with my wrist, surprisingly. It's not like a full body weight movement and I'm also not like intensely playing. That's low. I'm also not intensely playing tennis. And then my other thing that one of my friends has really been trying to get me into is running. I've gone on a few runs. I can't say I like it right now, but I really like how it makes me feel afterwards. I've downloaded Strava. I've done the whole thing. I've never liked running growing up. I feel like I've always had kind of bad endurance and I just can never breathe when I'm doing cardio. So it's something that I've wanted to work up to. So I've been starting with two miles. I definitely can't run the whole time, but I would love any tips if you guys are runners. My friend who trained for a half marathon after never being a runner and fully did it and got obsessed with running is the one who's been giving me a lot of tips and I really trust her. And then also, if you guys remember, my sister is a very successful runner. So in my mind, I'm like, genetically, I should be able to do this. We are half siblings, but... <sighs> You know, that's that's my new thing because I've got to get some movement flowing. Another reason why I wanted to get into it is if you guys watched one of my last vlogs, you heard that I've been trying to go off my SSRI medications and I've just been feeling so antsy. And I was going on a lot of walks and I was like, I should just run to tire myself out. And I will say that's been a nice outlet for me. So that's all I really wanted to share life wise and if you guys have any experience with these things i know some of you have commented before definitely let me know how you got it sorted if you did or we can just kind of grieve it together but let's chat something more fun it is truly so nice to be able to look out this window now we have this beautiful landing area upstairs it's such a stunning window with a beautiful view of the trees in the winter you can see all the mountains when the leaves fall off but before it was just so tarnished by how the exterior of our home looked paint was so chipped and worn off and there was some rotting wood as i mentioned this job isn't totally complete yet but the difference is insane i want to know if you guys have any ideas for exterior lighting out here. This light's gotta go, but I'd love to find something cool to replace it with. I'm definitely going for like a mid-century vibe with a lot of the exterior finishes. Keep that in mind. I would like to source something vintage though. I really want to have a bunch of warm light around the house, especially in the winter time, just to make it feel really cozy. But that's just the bulbs. But I definitely want lights that can emit the warm light really well. We have a bed and breakfast as one of our neighbors and they have the most beautiful garden and warm lighting. And their property is just such a dream and I'm definitely using them for inspiration. I'll insert some images of what I'm thinking. Our TV room upstairs is definitely coming along as well. I'm so happy we have a separate space to watch TV. So we have like a living room downstairs with our fireplace. It's good for hosting, playing games, reading, whatever. And here's where we watch TV on this very comfy Vetsack sofa. I get a lot of questions about this. We've had it for almost a year now and I talked about it quite a while ago, but I would still Totally recommend. We have their dark gray cord velours fabric, and this is their medium sized sofa, and it's still so deep, so large for a love seat. And then these are their giant pillows and the square pillows. If you're getting this sofa, I will say it is a bit firmer. It's still very comfy, but I would definitely recommend getting some pillows for it. That's a mohair pillow by Hawkins, New York. In the city, I have a blanket in the same fabric and I love it so much. And back there we have a Robert Zillman floor lamp. We actually bought those as a pair and we have one downstairs as well. My habit is kind of copying other pieces <laughs> that I already own, which maybe isn't the best, but in the city I also have like the wall pendant version of this light. 
And the rug is the new addition. This is the sweater rug from Revival in the color Chestnut. There's a more true color of what it is. They have this in a few different colors, but it is so, so comfy. Laszlo loves it. And I honestly think that I might get another one of these in a lighter color for the city as well. They kindly gifted it to me and I also got another rug from them for our downstairs living area. And they also shared a coupon code with you guys. This particular rug is also on sale at the moment so you could get a crazy deal, but they gave me a 10% off discount code to share with my followers that works through like mid-September. So if you're in the market for a rug, I would definitely check them out. They have a bunch of beautiful like one of one vintage rugs and then they also manufacture some of their own rugs. Here's kind of a random placement for this chair at the moment. I don't know if this is gonna stay in here. This is from Kayo. If you wanna find something similar, you could search Luna leather lounge chair in Ottoman and you could probably find something. These are pretty popular vintage chairs and there's quite a lot of online stock. So I don't know if this will stay in here, but I do love this chair. The main issue that I think it was reupholstered and the front looks great, but the back is covered in this like neoprene. When natural light hits it, it can look kind of cheap from the back. So I have to style it in a way where it's facing a wall. And then this zone kind of needs some help, I will say. I love this credenza. This is from an old apartment of mine. It's a 1960s Stowe Davis credenza. I found it on Cherish. I want to sort out the cords down here. Ideally, I would like to have a TV mounted, but mounted in a way that it kind of splits the wood and the wall. Just to open up the space on the credenza for some styling. I feel like I, I need some symmetry on this wall. Maybe some more plants. I've mentioned this before, but I would love to get this molding off the edge of these cabinets. I think it just doesn't really makes sense in the space so that will be a project eventually it's also like this light switch hasn't been switched out because they literally cut it to go around the molding most of our other covers now are steel and yes we still have to do the popcorn ceilings in here done them in here and i think they look pretty good but removing the popcorn makes such a mess i've really been dreading doing our bedroom because it's such a big space but it's gonna make all the difference the process is mostly done in our bathroom we still need to do like wall and ceiling repairs and paint but we are gonna completely gut this eventually i've been trying to make it better for the time being other kind of smaller next projects. I've had a light fixture forever that we need to get up here and swap out. I got one of the floss glue ball light fixtures to replace this with. There's honestly not many ceiling lights in this home and I don't think we're gonna wire a lot of them in. We just want to have a lot of lamps to make it feel cozy. Some places definitely need them and this one's gonna go. We're gonna do it ourselves. We just need to work up the courage or sort a safe way to get up there on a ladder because we're gonna have to put the ladder on the stairs. They still have some of the remaining old carpet. This carpet used to be all throughout the upstairs. And we installed new hardwood in some of the rooms basically just to match some hardwood that was already here. So like this is the old hardwood and this is the new hardwood. So it does match pretty well but the new hardwood is far too glossy. Our eventual plan is to sand down what we have and restain just to make everything match nicely. And I really don't want it to look glossy. I want them to kind of look like reclaimed wood floors, which were way out of our budget. Definitely more sustainable just to keep what's already here and match it. And I actually really like a thin planked wood, especially in older homes. I feel like everyone's going in the direction of wide planks, but I want it to feel very wooden, very cozy in here, but still modern in its own way. Then I've still kind of been deciding here if we should have our welder do another iron railing, like what we have downstairs. I think the wood is fine to stay. I would just want to swap out this hardware because it's golden very 80s feeling. Here's the kind of railing style that I would have our welder copy for some of our stair railings. Like I think in here it would make sense or we could just swap out the hardware. And this carpet's also gotta go, but this was also in a lot of the house before. I'm definitely on the hunt for some runners for our stairs. Just don't know exactly what we want to do and we'll probably redo the floors first. A little guest bathroom peek. This is the one that we've done mostly ourselves. We have a guest staying here right now, so I'm not really gonna go in here. It's definitely not on the top of our priority list, but we'd love to redo these tiles eventually. 
maybe get like a towel bar or some pretty art for in here. And then this is an old tub, which I would love to have replaced with something a bit nicer, but it's all good for now. And there's a look at what this bathroom looked like before. We haven't done the closet yet. A pretty crazy transformation, I have to say, at least for a DIY job. We've talked about the kitchen a bit before, but this is gonna get a full gut. I think it's gonna be our next project. Maybe later in this video, I'll show some like updated ideas or maybe we'll visit a showroom together. And then in here, I would love to get like one of the Noguchi hanging lanterns that are a bit bigger just to kind of make this its own zone and also swap out the ceiling fan for something a little bit more modern. And then we also really want to get the ceiling in here to match this ceiling, or we're going to have it painted white so that it can be cohesive with our kitchen ceiling. We have to figure that out. I think white would be okay. Usually I'm kind of against painting wood, but there is already a ton of wood paneling in this room. We definitely need to source some art for the space. Maybe over our dining table, I would also do a pretty pendant. In this light, you can really see the difference between some of the new wood floors versus the old wood floors. And it kind of drives me crazy. So we've got to get it all to match. And then I'm not sure if we should do a runner on these steps or not. There used to be one there, as you can tell. I don't really know, I'd have to see once we get the floors fixed. And then out here from our deck, we have this building, which we did not get the exterior done for yet because in our most ideal world, this is gonna be an outdoor sauna. It's currently our wood shed. We also have another shed that's kind of similar on the property. It's a bit smaller, but I think this is just the most ideal space for a sauna. In the winter, we can run out these doors and there's steps and a perfect platform for it already because our house is built into a hill. So some of the work would already be done. And if we could use this structure for the outside, that would be incredible. I'd love to have it painted black like the rest of the house and also have a window in it that you can look out to the forest. I think that would be so, so nice. There's another look. So that's a future project, definitely. At least a year out though, I would say. I would love if we had it this winter, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Another project is that we need to get the lining of this fireplace fixed, which is like an $8,000 job. So we've just been putting it off because this fireplace is definitely more for aesthetics. Our wood stove down here is very much so for warmth. It would seriously be so cozy to have both of them going in the winter. So that's also a future priority, but probably like a couple years down the line as well. And I want to swap the outside too, so it's not gold. Future job for the exterior is definitely switching out our current front door. I want to get a beautiful like wood teak inner door with maybe like a glass outside, still maybe a screen, but this is definitely not the vibe. The actual outside of the door did get painted with the rest of the house for the time being. And actually today I need to go around the house and put tape on all the areas that need to be fixed up. The house, it's pretty much done, but there's still some touch up areas that the guys need to come back and go over. So as you're seeing it now, it's not all the way done. We're also planning on doing like some wood garage doors here as well in the future, but for now we've just painted them. They did paint them like a semi-gloss and I do kind of wish these went matte. They're also just cheap garage doors, so I think it just makes them stand out a little bit more and not the best way, but they are eventually going. That's a good example of unfinished work. <laughs> And they didn't fully finish our screened in porch either. Some of it's still green and brown and we are gonna replace the entire screen on the outside of this as well. You can see there's like tape over it right now. And yeah, the paint job just isn't quite finished in there. They also rebuilt these stairs, the rotted remnants here. There's no railing still, which definitely isn't up to code. Last I talked to our contractor, it was just via text and he acted like they weren't gonna do it but i believe our agreement was for him to finish the stairs and that's what we paid him for so we're gonna need to talk to him about that here's an example of more lights i would like to fix up and also i can't really do anything about this propane tank without spending a lot of money but i want to sort out a way to cover it up because that doesn't look so nice but it really is so nice to come up the driveway to this is our house now it's made the biggest difference another thing that i would like to swap out are those reflector pulls it's basically just so no one goes off the edge when they're backing out of our driveway. 
but they're bright yellow and plastic and kind of dingy so I need to find something cute to put there instead. I think this part's gonna be a me and Siggy job but our deck needs sanding and resealed for the winter. There's also some rotten bits that I think we need to replace. So that's gonna be a DIY project soon before it gets too cold and then before spring we really have to do something about these garden beds on the side of the house. And like these steps you can tell are kind of rotted out. It's gonna be our ideal sauna entrance. Another bad garden bed. Eek. I'm back in the city. We're about to head to the reform kitchen showroom today to look at some kitchen cabinet options. I'm very excited. <laughs> 